Just yesterday, October 16, I launched the People's Party. Now, I'd written a book about it before, but I got the Facebook page. I got Twitter, Instagram, uh, you know, I, I got the little bit of a dot com web. I got I got it launched and you can follow and like and share. I got followable and like, but before it was just a book. And I am going to take this very special edition podcast comparable to a Limbaugh fourth hour. Well, I, do you know? Well, you are intelligent, right? That means that you never allow one word to make you vitriolic, right? Rush Limbaugh has this thing where he, he will talk a fourth hour. He has a three hour show, but if he feels he wants to say something, he'll have a fourth hour, which his subscribers can download and listen to or participate in it online. So that's what a very special edition podcast is. That's right. So this is my very special edition podcast. I know some of you are all angry. You said Limbaugh. I'm going to stop thinking about everything else. Well, then, then, then helping the country and reconciling isn't for you because the bull who's angry at the blanket is getting slaughtered. Don't be that guy. Now I'm going to get, these are the five, uh, the, the five ideas that I have in mind with the people's party. Now, before I say them, I'm going to say this. I don't, I don't, I am not going to create a little political party and do it for you and give it to you and make it perfect for you. And then you can, you can just give me your support and I'll go do it. Doesn't work that way. It's called the people's party. It's your party. So it's part of your responsibility to define what its values are. So these are not the values. These are the pillars. The values of the people's party have not been written yet because you haven't written them. It's got to be your party. I'm not going to go off and organize the People's Party in every state. The people have to do it. The problem with the Democrats and Republicans, you've got these experts creating a political party for everyone else. Stop acting like everyone's supposed to serve you. Stop being a consumer with everything, including politics. And I mean you. I'm talking to myself. I'm looking in in the reflection of my touchscreen display right now, actually. Everyone, myself, stop being a consumer with everything, including politics. Do it yourself. Reach up and take. Write it yourself. These are the five talking points to bring people to the table. No values. The mission is to abolish a a, a bipolar, manic, depressive America. And to do that, you have to not let certain words bother you. So I'm going to say four words that irritate a lot of people. And if you can't stand to hear one of these words, there is no hope for you having friends because you're, you're too easy to control through anger. Here are the four words. Obama. Gun control. Limbaugh. Trump, if you're vitriolic, turn this off and vote partisan and stay divided the rest of your life. If you can control your mind hearing those four terms, then you are able to have conversations and communicate with other human beings. And maybe we can escape from the one single two-headed monster the Republican Democrat control system. Here are the five pillars that bring people to the table, to the people's party. The goal is to stop being bipolar and manic depressive with politics, flipping back and forth all the time, like like a ping pong ball caught in a, in a whirlwind going around and around and around. Stop, cut the pendulum off. That's the mission. Here are the pillars. Come to the table. These are not the values. You have to write the values. I keep saying it because it's a new concept. 
These are not. Someone's going to say, you, when you talked about the values, they're not values. They're pillars to come to the table for us to write the values. And I don't even need to be there. You go do it. Here are the pillars. One, different politicians and cities lean and cooperate uh, this way or that way. You know, Chicago Democrats are different from from uh, California Democrats, which is fine. You know, we lean this way or that. We tell people, you know, I tend to lean liberal. I tend to lean conservative. But we cooperate with the other people. Uh, you know, abortion may have to be a local law. And I, I'm telling you right now, if you don't hurry up and get on... <laughs> If you don't get on board with this and get your friends on board with this, abortion is going to be outlawed all across America. I'm being clairvoyant with this. It's coming. Write it down. I owe you, uh, only one of you, one bottle of Coca-Cola if I'm wrong. Uh, Just because it's fun to buy people a bottle of Coca-Cola. Maybe you need to claim that on your taxes. I don't know. If, 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 if gambling laws apply, we'll make sure that we do it in a, in a place where it's legal to gamble. Okay. We lean this way or that way and we cooperate. No more of this trying to force my way of doing things on the whole rest of the country. And that's, that's going to shut down a lot of Christians. I, I'm a Christian, by the way. We lean this way. We tell people, I lean this way. I lean that way. We cooperate. One, two, taxes need to be simple and optimized. When we talk about the tax rate, there needs to be a lot of data, a lot of research. Many people put their company or they move out of America. If the tax rate is, uh, you know, for this, for parking, if it's 20%, people are going to leave. But if it's 15%, they'll all show up. So 20% is no deal. 20% of nothing is nothing. 15% of something is 15%. We're going to have a lot more if we do 15% instead of always trying to overplay our hand and overreach and get more than, than we're allowed to have. No eating the, fan that, the, the hand that feeds us. Don't eat the hand that feeds you. So we got to bring taxes down. None of this, we need to lower taxes. None of this, we got to raise taxes because we need money. None of that. There has to be data. There has to be research suggesting what the tax rate is in the conversation or you're kicked out of the party. Uh, it doesn't, I mean, you know, people, I mean, you know, there's lies, there's darn lies, and there's statistics. I mean, people are going to take their data and make it go this way and that way, but at least they got to talk about the data and have an intelligent conversation, not just this, we got to lower taxes. We got to raise taxes because we got to pay for stuff. Well, lower taxes, it brings in revenue. We have to talk about data and be intelligent. And the taxes need to be simple. Three, the solution to gun control and gun violence. Second Amendment includes the word militia, folks, and militia includes all men. Women are, have an option. They're invited. Men are required. Uh... I don't know. Maybe that should be reevaluated. Maybe, maybe the whole men have to be in the militia should be reevaluated. I, I think the issue is that, that men is that other armies are going to have men in the, the shape of the body and stuff. But I don't, I don't know. I'm a, but whatever. That's the old definition of a militia. Every able-bodied male. Very historical in human history. That's the militia. That the king decides going to invade the whole nation. All men in his country are in his army. That's a militia. Although a militia is self-organized. It was kind of a new concept especially within governments interacting with them seriously when, when the United States government was created. It was an army of the people. But there's no militia. The National Guard is not a militia because it doesn't include every able-bodied male. Actually, the only militia, the only arguable thing in a militia is that you have to register for the draft. If you did not register for the draft, you're very illegal in America if you're an, if you're an able-bodied male. Now, the militia needs to be a class that's necessary to get a high school diploma. And I think it should be required in order to vote. And anyone, I, I think women should be required to go to the class and just to know what it is. 
Uh, if, if we want to have a lighter requirement for women because we just love women and we want to make life wonderful and great for them, there still should be a class that they need to go to. Anyone can go to the class. If there are requirements you can't meet because of a medical or psychological situation, you get a waiver. But you got to go through the process and meet the requirements or, or, or get an exemption. That, that means you don't have to do it. And, you, and finish the process. And after that, then you can vote. And that's your voter registration card. Voter registration is a problem. The militia class gives you a carry permit so you can carry a weapon. You have to follow the laws of this state and that state, and they may change. It's like driving laws, but that militia class is your permit. Same thing with hunter's safety. It should be a requirement in order to drive. Just a basic militia class. All the militia class does, it teaches you some basic on how to exercise to make your body stronger from, from a military, you got to stay in shape way. Not, not just health and fitness, but it's, it's like, here are some exercises you can do to keep your body really, really strong. When, when, when the enemy comes and he wants to come into your house and beat your lights out, this is some exercises you can do to keep yourself strong at home. Some basic combat how to disassemble a, f a handgun and a rifle. I say handgun, there's, I, I don't want to confuse people. I'm using simple terms here. I could say a side piece, but. So how to shoot weapons and how to be safety, how to safely handle a firearm. What uh, different types of guns and what they do. Uh, maybe some advanced classes on how to drive a tank or even fly an airplane or, or operate a, a rocket launcher, but that needs to be a higher level. Like that, that, that's, that's like, you know, but maybe the class should include how to support someone who's firing a rocket launcher, how to, how to stand back when he shoots that thing. This is the dangerous area. Ready? Here's my rocket launcher. Where are you going to stand over there? Good. You pass, you know, maybe some of that, uh, maybe you know, the rankings within the military, the different types of ranks. I don't, I, I'm ashamed. I don't know what they all are. And you've, you've got a, you've got a private somewhere in there. There's a corporal, there's a captain, there's a lieutenant, second lieutenant. I, 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 I'm ashamed to say, I don't know what they are. I wish I learned those. I wish I'd been required to. The military alphabet, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. You, you, you need to know those so you can talk on the radio. Basic cooperation. It needs to be a one-year class in high school. And I think people would like it. It would include how to cooperate with the police in a situation. How to, a police officer, you know, if, if, there's, if there's a bank robbery, there's hostages, every human, every citizen walking down the street had that militia class. So the police can take anyone and say, we have a situation, I need you to help, and he knows how to help. The police officer will use certain words and tell him things, and that person understands how to help that police officer and, quote unquote, obey him in the field, knows how to follow orders in a, in a quick situation, already trained for that. Um, you know, even, even a traffic stop. I mean, if, 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 if you understand how to interact with police at a traffic stop, okay, officer, I was doing this, what I mean, you know how to deal with them. You know, I, I remember, I remember, I, I think it was Chris Rock had this comical training video, how to be stopped by police and okay, what not to do. Who are you? How dare you? Okay. Hello, officer. Thank you. This is what to, Chris Rock had this comic. Well, a lot of people don't know that. Militia class would handle that. All right. More could be said. Maybe you disagree, but those are some ideas of what I'm thinking when I say a militia class. Militia should be a class in high school. It should be designed, quote unquote, by the federal government, but it needs to be implemented and carried out and trained by the state. That's the Constitution. And that's what the Second Amendment's about. The se that's, that's the thing. See, conservatives get all riled up about Second Amendment. Second Amendment's about being trained in the militia. Yeah, you have a right to carry a gun. Everywhere, Constitution says, that's your license. Anything else is illegal. Now, uh, you've got that, but what about militia? That's equally part of it. Conservatives don't complain about that. So I think that'd bring a lot of people together right there. You need to have a militia. Built to last. 
This was the problem between Obama and Trump. Obama was one of, and I'm going to write down a note here because I want to constitution. I need to talk about that. And I also need to talk about flags. That's, that's an issue. Normally we have a president who's a Republican and usually he's going to be there two terms that you get used to it. And then he's going to be Republican and then a Democrat. And then the next one's going to be Republican and the next one's going to be a Democrat. And he's probably going to be there for two terms, each one. So when the Republican president is there, his number one job as a politician trying to make voters support him, his number one job is to pass laws that the next president is not going to have an easy time changing. Because the next president from the opposite political party, he's coming. You got a Democrat president, the Republican is coming after him and the Republican is going to want to change everything as soon as he steps into office. That's how it's been. That's how it, you should be prepared. And Obama didn't prepare for that. I don't know why he didn't do it. Maybe it's because health care, big, not easy law to pass. Healthcare was passed right away when Obama became president, and maybe he thought it was always going to be that easy. Obama, when he made his laws, Trump's just undoing them all now. When Obama made his laws, they weren't laws. It was just, we're going to do things this way while I'm president. And then after, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Next president, I'm going to do everything so that the next president can just, and it's gone. That's how we did things. It's the, the, the big fancy government word for that is executive order. That means I'm going to put the couch over here and I'm going to put the table here and I'm going to put the curtains over there and I'm going to have the curtain. The curtains are going to be gold colored and I'm going to put a rug uh, under my desk. And the next president comes in. No, the curtains are going to be red and we're going to move the couch and I'm going to put that rug. It's going to be over by the door, not under my desk. That's what executive order stuff is. Boom. Just change it. And that's almost the only thing that Obama did with his laws. And the, 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 the Trumpists, the people who voted for Trump, didn't like Obama using executive order for that because that's not executive, you know, we're going to do it this way while I'm president. And then after, who cares? I, I don't even think about tomorrow. I only think about what I want right now. And I'm not going to, you know, plan for the long run. I, people who voted for Trump didn't want those to be the types of laws. They wanted, well, policy. They wanted laws to be passed by Congress that would last, that would continue into the next president. So all this instability, because Trump is, quote unquote, changing things. Actually, what Trump is, if you look carefully, I mean, he comes out and he says something to get everybody mad. But if you look at the meat of what Trump's actually doing, it's we're not going to do this while I'm president. And it runs this way. We're going to do a law. I'm going to make a law. Trump's Puerto Rico comment. I'm not going to keep FEMA in there forever. I'm not going to keep sales workers forever. If you want some, it's got to come from Congress. When he said that, that got people excited and talking about it. But if you look at it, that actually means Trump's helping Puerto Rico with this, while I'm president, we do it this way. He doesn't want to do that. Trump wants a law so that Puerto Rico gets permanent help. That's actually the action that Trump is suggesting. After you get past all the, (laughs) you get past the barking noise. That's what Trump's actually doing. Now, no, I'm not defending Trump. I'm saying there's a difference between we're going to do it this way while I'm president and we're going to make a law that even the next president has to follow. And we need to focus on building things to last. That's the fourth pillar. We don't do executive order, executive order, executive order. Now, this gets into something that we need to understand about politics. Trump and Obama made a better team 
than Bush and Obama. Obama would not have been elected without George W. Bush doing the things he did. And Trump could not have been elected without Obama. And with Obama, Trump was inevitable. Jeb would have won the primaries probably if, if Hillary had been president. We have Trump thanks to Obama. I remember I was in high school in Reed City and we started a charter school, Crossroads Charter Academy in Big Rapids, Michigan. And, and I was there with the, the founding president of the board. His son and I were classmates in a certain class and we didn't like contraceptives being passed around the classroom. Planned Parenthood came in talked about absence for two minutes and then talked about products that are sold at a profit by someone. People make money off of those things. And my mother didn't like that very much and I did my friend's mother and they got to clucking in their hen sessions and my, my friend's dad got it. People got him over the next four years. They created a charter school. And during those four years, a number of people went to the local school board in Reed City and said, uh, you can't do this, and you can't do that. And more or less, it was reported that the president of that board told my mother, basically more or less, as it was summarized by people, to sit down and shut up. And my mother kind of took exception to that. And there were a lot of other times that that board ignored people. They didn't follow their own basic rules. A lawyer came in and, and said, if someone asked the board a question, the board doesn't say, we think this. You make a motion and vote on what the board thinks about that. You don't just up and speak for the board. You got to follow your rules. There were a lot, lot of stuff that went on with that board of education in Reed City. And they wouldn't listen to the people. They insulted the people. And the people went out and started a, cross, uh, the, the, the charter academy, Crossroads Charter Academy. It was a uh, charter school. And my father said, They should build a statue to the president of that board over at Reed City for irritating the people so much that they made this school. My father suggested the idea as a joke. Trumpists and anti-Trumpists alike, be aware. Trump's presidency is largely in debt to Obama. Only Obama made Trump possible. If you don't like Trump, you don't like Obama. If you like Trump, you're thankful for Obama. Just remember that. If you are genuinely afraid or you have a friend who is genuinely afraid of Trump, remember this. Conservatives felt the same way during the Obama years, but they were quiet and calm and they didn't just get mad and go riot and break things. They didn't get mad and say a bunch of mean sounding things. Ha ha ha. See, you thought I wouldn't say that mean sounding thing. Well, I did anyway. They didn't go do that. All the people that genuinely felt the same fear that some people have about Trump, they felt that about Obama. They didn't go whine and cry and complain. They were just quiet and they put all their energy into voting for Trump. The Obama people, the people who supported Obama, lots of noise, lots of talk. Lots of excitement, but then it was blown away the next day. It was a house built on sand. And the other people focus their energy on building something that lasts. Now, I am not blaming or condemning people that didn't like Trump. I don't like this. I, I don't like the situation. I wish that the people who had voted for Obama had been able to get something that lasted. My, my problem with Obama is not just that, that, that he had a liberal type of ideas when I like conservative type of ideas. My problem with Obama is that he didn't build anything that lasted. Even Obamacare, quote unquote, the Affordable Care Act is under attack. And, and the people that voted for Obama if I have a, a, a little bit of a bone to pick with them, if I have a, 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 an argument, it's that they haven't been focused on building things that last. And so they're not winning. And we need more people to win. We need people who win. 
you want to win, don't you? Your friends who think differently from you, they want to win, don't they? So let's talk about how to win. Obama's biggest failure was not whether he was conservative or liberal. His failure was that he didn't build something that would outlast Trump, the president obviously coming after him. This is how it works. It goes a Democrat and then a Republican. As as wonderful as I think Trump is going to be in the eyes of many Americans, many people are going to say Trump was wonderful. We're probably looking at a Democrat president after Trump, very possibly. I'm gearing up. It, if, if we don't, we, I mean, we may have a Republican. I don't know. I'm not going to be a clairvoyant on that. But if we don't have a Democrat after Trump, it will be very unusual. And if we get a Republican after Trump, I will be genuinely concerned. I'm a Republican type of thinker anyway, and I, I, I like Republican ideas, but I don't like the idea of Republicans having too much power. Because I don't trust what they do. And so we need to redirect our attention and we need to focus on the People's Party. The People's Party. The fifth pillar of conversation coming to the table about the People's Party is to educate and participate. What I just said about Trump and Obama and how they helped each other in executive order, a lot of people don't know that. And we need to know that. Uh, Taxes, there's a thing called the Laffer curve. It's largely a theory in economics. It's it's like you get the the low, like if you ever played SimCity, like about 8% is what the game liked. You get taxes have to be, you can't put taxes at zero, there's no money. But if you make them too high, then people can't afford to live. And then tax tax revenue, the, the money government makes from taxes goes way down. So you got to get that sweet spot. It's about maybe maybe 8, 15, 20% somewhere in there for different folks because that's what we're calling them, right? Since Obama years, we call them folks. Different people have, you know, about 15 to 20% is the sweet spot. We want taxes to hover in there and that's where the government gets the most bang for its buck, right? But then you can also raise taxes up to like 80 or 90%. And then the government makes the same amount of money, even though the economy is suffering. And that's the Laffer curve. It's a theory. A lot of people don't know about that. There's a, you got to find the sweet spot for the tax rates. The purpose of taxes is not to just steal money so that my boss burns down his company and I'm jobless. That's not the purpose of raising taxes. That jerk, he's got all the money in the world. His, his pockets are bottomless. And I can just get money from him forever. And even though I know that's not true, I'm going to act like it because I'm just mad. I'm going to take all his evil money. That's not the purpose of raising taxes. But that's what Democrats do when they want to get elected. They say things like that. Republicans, taxes, that's government. We should have anarchy. We need to get rid of all taxes. Just lower them forever. Just keep lowering them because that's what we do. You can't do that either. We need to have intelligent conversations. And a lot of people aren't aware of the Laffer curve, the sweet spot at the low end and the high end of the tax rate. We need to educate people about stuff like that. Executive orders, build stuff to last. Don't just run things this way while you're president. That People need to be educated about that. Another thing is the constitution. Why is, the, why is a constitution important? All the states voted to send people to represent them. And some of those states wanted slavery and other states were determined to end slavery. And they tried to make a country that was free and fair. But the slave states in the South, where, where the British originally had their base back in, in the 1600s, going back to England. So you think slave, you think South, you need to think, you need to think British. Slave, you need to think British. That was Britain. That was Britain. The pilgrims on Plymouth Rock landed in the north where there wasn't slavery. So landing on Plymouth Rock means no slaves. South means Britain, means slavery. Remember that. People don't know. People think landing on Plymouth Rock, the slaves came to Plymouth Rock. People don't know that. We need to educate people about that stuff. And 
they all came together from the North and the South to make this constitution and the South, heavily influenced by Britain, really wanted to keep slavery. And so the people in the North said, what are we going to do? Well, we could do this and we could do that and we'll make this so that maybe a hundred years later, a president like Lincoln can come along and, 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 and get rid of slavery later. Maybe that's how we'll do it. And that was the best they could do at that time. And, and it worked. Lincoln used stuff that the, that the North snuck into the Constitution to get rid of slavery. When that Constitution was written, all of the states came together and they agreed together. The country was unified. They weren't fighting. All the people agreed, this is how we're going to do things. Trump can't come in 200 years later and just do whatever he wants. Obama can't come in 200 years later and just do whatever he wants. Bush and Clinton can't just come in 200 years later and do whatever they want. You, you, the police can't just go to your house and do whatever they want. That's called constitution. It's a good thing. It's in the way of people who tyrants, be them Obama or Bush or Clinton or Trump who just come in and want to do whatever they want. And we need that. And people don't know that. And educating people about that in school and in talking and in, 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 in just encouraging people, writing books and handing out pamphlets and being nice to people who disagree with us and trying to listen and explain and learn from other, let other people explain stuff to us. Educating each other is one of the values, at least I think it should be. I would argue for that. Like it needs to be created, crafted as a value. Right now, it's only a pillar for coming together with conversation. But I would advocate that, that that's probably the value I would advocate. The one thing to educate each other and listen to each other about these things. The last thing that I'm going to talk about to educate people on is flags. Flags have a culture. Uh, I was in the marching band in high school. There are certain ways to, you have to, you know, you hold this there and that flag comes over here and there's what's called color guard. And that, that's, a, that's a group of people marching, maybe four or five, could be a little bit more or less, but they carry a flag. They have a special holster. It, it, it's around their, their shoulders and they carry a flag and one flag points up and then the other flag leans forward and this one has to be on the right and that one on the left and this flag has to be above that flag and when we put the flag up the flagpole it has to go this way and we have to run our hands this way and then this flag is taller than the other flags and, and if we if we're someone died in our organization or our house we're going to fly the flag at half mast and so you put the flag all the way up and then half and then when you take it down at the end of the day you roll it all the way up and then pull it all the way down there's flags have rules and they those rules are they they it's a way of communicating armies would use flags to communicate when we didn't have radios and telephones flags mean things and you do this or that, it means something. It's, it's a language. And that language says, if you don't stand and look at the flag during a national anthem, that means you wish that the government before was running things or the government that recently attacked had won and defeated you. That's the implication. That's the basic meaning, which means... If you don't stand now, football players, they don't know this. They don't mean I, and this is my other problem. This is where I tend to think like a liberal. I don't think the football players are bad if they don't stand. I don't think they're bad. I don't think they want to disrespect the flag. I don't think that's what they want to do. You get these people, you just want to disrespect the flag. I don't think they do. They're worried about something and they want to get attention. They want to raise it just like Trump goes off and says these crazy things to get people to help Puerto Rico permanently. The football players are doing crazy stuff to get attention, to get help with an ongoing problem. Now, you want to talk about the problem with racism? The side topic, the problem with racism today, you know, they talk about the racism today is different from the racism before, right? I'm, I'll tell you right now, the racism today 
is a type of racism that's like people from different countries and cultures and languages that don't understand each other. That's more how it behaves. It's called xenophobia. We don't, the, the prejudices in America between black people and white people are not like the old, you know, like where you had the, you had the, you had the, the encyclopedia saying that you know, what these guys are less intelligent. You know, that's gone. Thank God. Thank, praise Jesus that's gone. But the racism today, it's different today. Okay, it's different. It's different. That's all people say. It's different. Okay. I'm telling you how it's different. It's like xenophobia. Look it up. It's it's like the guy from this country and the guy from that country, and they, they you know they they didn't really talk to each other, don't understand each other. They make assumptions about each other, and they're kind of don't like that. Why do you do it that way? That like that's that type of stuff. You want to understand the racism day? It's like xenophobia. Side topic. So yeah, we've got we have ongoing problems of the day, of course. And are we ignoring them? Uh, in a lot of ways, yeah. Is there progress? Of course. I'm thankful for progress. But the football players are trying to raise awareness of problems. They're just doing it in a wrong way. The same as Trump, raising awareness of problems, doing it in a wrong way. But you know what? I can't blame either one of them. The liberal football players or the conservative president. There is no acceptable way to wake someone up who shouldn't be sleeping. And the football players are waking up a country that shouldn't be sleeping and they're doing the wrong thing to do it because that's the only way the country will accept. It's more of the country's fault. Trump is doing things the wrong way to get the country woken up and talking about things because the country shouldn't have been sleeping in the first place. Oh, the wrong way was the only way to do it. Now, I'm not blaming the football players when I say that this is disrespect for the country. That's not, I'm not blaming them. I'm saying there's flag language here that people don't know about and we need to educate people. I don't, I don't see conservatives upset about the NFL protests. I don't see conservatives talking about this. I don't see anyone talking about this. So I'm talking about it. We need to educate people. That that's the fifth pillar. Educate and participate. Listen to each other, educate each other. The way flag language works, when the flag flies and we play the little song for the country, you stand up, you're supposed to put your hand on your heart, but standing up is the important part. You stand up and and give your attention to the flag. If that flag isn't there, (laughs) you're British, which means in the South, you're a slave if you're black. Those players don't know this, but when they don't stand for the flag, they're saying that they wish that America had never run, won the Revolutionary War so that the British slave states in the South would still have slavery today. And if it's in the South, such as Miami, if they don't stand for the flag, they're saying they wish that the South had won and that slavery would still be there today because they don't want the flag that defeated Brit- England and the flag that defeated slavery. They don't know it. But that's what it means without knowing it. And we need to educate people about this. Conservatives, you're disrespecting the country. No, that's not what it is. There's flag language. And that, and and they're saying, players are saying this because they want to get attention with an ongoing issue. Xenophobia is the racism we've got today. We need to educate people about that. That's very useful. I'm interested in being useful. Those are the five pillars of the party. Now, when I say educate and participate, that means we educate each other, we listen to each other, and that means that I don't write the charter for the People's Party for you. Educate and participate. The fifth pillar means you've got to write the values. We've got to come together and talk to each other about the situation, and the we, the people, have to create this party. You've got to go get organized in your county and in your state. I am not going to come to your state and help get the People's Party registered in your state. You've got to go get organized and do it. You've got to go define the values. But the pillars of conversation coming together are one, we lean right or left and we tell people what that is, but we still cooperate with our differences and make it so that states and counties and cities can opt in and opt out and opt back in. And 
we two taxes need to be simple and the tax rate needs to be based on on a, on a research theory. Now people are going to make that theory lie, but at least it's not just we got to raise taxes. No, we got to lower them. We're not going to talk that way. We're going to find the sweet spot. And the, they need to be simple. Three, militia needs to be a class in high school that's a prerequisite for driving and for voting. Of course, there are medical and psychological exceptions. Of course, of course. But for the most part, it's something you got to go through. And that's, that solves crime, violence, gun control issues. And that's Second Amendment. That, that's what the, 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 the pro-Second Amendment guys, unfortunately, seem to lo- overlook. Right, right to carry, yeah, but obligation to be trained in militia. Four, build things to last. Don't just run things this way while he's president. You have to pass a law so that the next guy can't come in and undo things. That's what happened with Obama. Bush gave us Obama and, well, Clinton gave us Bush. And, and his father, the first Bush, gave us Clinton. Going back to the first Bush, H.W. Bush, led to this, led to that. And, and, and now we've got Trump. So we've got H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Obama, all of them to thank for Donald Trump. Remember that. It goes back and forth, which is why we've got to build stuff to last. Not just, I'm going to do it this way while I'm president. It's called executive order. That's what Obama did, and that's why it's gone. We need to educate people, number five, so we understand why. This guy does things that way and that guy does things this way. What's the real issue with racism? It's xenophobia. Are the players trying to disrespect the country? No, they're trying to raise awareness. They just don't know how else to get our attention. And they don't really know what they're implying. But it's a discussion and there's, it's complicated. And we need to talk about it. The Constitution is good and useful. It unifies the country and it keeps tyrants like Trump and Obama from just doing whatever they want. Flags have, have certain ways of, of communicating things. And there are a whole slew of other ideas. Well, there is a slew, excuse me, of other ideas. There are a whole bunch of other ideas that we need to talk about. Those are the five pillars of coming to the table to talk to the People's Party. The one that I'm advocating become a value is number five. Educate and participate. Listen to each other on these, on, on these and other topics. I think police should be in a high school class for a week. You, have, you should have 10 police officers in a, in a class of, of no more than 30 high school students for an hour a day, 50 minutes maybe, for a week. And it's not the police officers indoctrinating the students. They're going to be in there. They're going to have the radio squawking. And the students are going to get used to those police officers and, and, and get, become accustomed to how the police officers move around. And the students talk to the police officers and the police officers should have to write down what the students say and put that in a report and send that to the state government. So there's listening. We need to educate each other. We need to participate with each other. And that means that you've got to create this party yourself. I wrote a book about this called The People's Party. We have other ideas. It's, 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 a, it's a happy, fun read. It's not a boring lawyer book. I made it that way on purpose. But it's your party. It's not mine. I'm just saying it's time to go for it. This has been a very special edition podcast. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.